Welcome everyone to another episode of the Synthesis Workshop. I am Shourab, your host for today's session. We are delighted to have with us our distinguished guest speaker, Dr. Charlotte R. O'Donnell. Charlotte earned her master's degree from the University of Edinburgh, followed by her PhD in the Stark Group at the University of Hamburg, where she worked on developing and applying palladium catalyzed allylic substitution reactions in natural product synthesis. She has recently joined the Hirsch Group at the Helmholtz Institute for Pharmaceutical Research Ireland as a postdoctoral researcher. With that, let's give a warm welcome to Charlotte as she begins her talk. Thank you for the kind introduction and thank you Matthew for the invitation to present this work on the Synthesis Workshop platform. Today, I will present my doctoral work on the enantioselective total synthesis of aspidospermidine. Aspidospermidine was first isolated from the bark of the South American tree, Aspidosperma cubaco blanco, in 1961. Aspidosperamidine has a pentacyclic framework with four contiguous stereocenters and is composed of tryptamine and cycloganin derived units, shown here in red and blue respectively. Aspidosperamidine and other structurally related aspidosperma alkaloids were shown to exhibit antiplasmodial activity against two strains of plasmodium falciparum which is the parasite responsible for the most severe forms of malaria. However, it is the construction of the pentacyclic framework that has attracted significant synthetic attention. Consequently, aspidospermidine has become a popular target for the development of novel synthetic methodologies. Based on our ongoing interest in asymmetric allylic substitution methodology, as well as natural product synthesis, we proposed a novel and anti-selective palladium catalyzed allylic substitution strategy for the synthesis of aspidospermidine. In our retrosynthetic analysis, aspidospermidine would be obtained from a deoxygenation of 4 oxy aspidospermidine. The keto group thereof can be regarded as the residual functionality of the preceding alpha beta unsaturated ketone, which is anticipated as the bipolar functional handle for establishing both the D and E rings. Thus, the D and E rings would be installed via an ND protection, azomycal addition, and intramolecular inlaid alkylation from the alpha beta saturated ketone. The essential endocyclic enone functionality should arise from an exo to endo double bond migration from the exocyclic enone. The exo enone would be obtained from the key and anti selective allylic substitution reaction between a tryptamine derivative and an allyl cation precursor, followed by a trapping of the generated indolanine in a manic reaction. Notably, the key allylic substitution reaction should not only construct the stereodictating quaternary carbon stereocenter, but also assemble the entire framework of a aspidospermidine. The synthesis commenced with the preparation of the substrates for the allylic substitution reaction. Tryptamine was sequentially N-alkylated and N-protected at the primary amine to furnish the desired indole derivative in 72% yield in a modified one-part procedure. The simplest allyl cation precursor with a hydroxy group at the leaving group position was obtained from a Marita bayless hillman reaction between methylvinyl ketone and acetaldehyde to give the allylic alcohol an 83% yield. Since the hydroxy group is a poor leaving group, this allylic alcohol is an unactivated allylic substrate and would therefore require activation in the substitution reaction, for example by a Lewis acid additive. Since activated allylic substrates with good leaving groups such as carbonates or acetates are more commonly reported, we also prepared the corresponding allylic methyl carbonate and the regioisomeric allylic acetate, the latter of which was obtained by an SN2 prime Mitsunobu reaction using acetic acid as a pronucleophile. These substrates were then submitted to non-stereoselective allylic substitution protocols to investigate the general feasibility of this reaction. We first applied the allylic methyl carbonate with conditions inspired by Raval and co-workers for activated allylic substrates. Unfortunately, no formation of the indolene product was observed. We then applied the allylic alcohol with conditions inspired by Tamaru and co-workers for unactivated allylic substrates. Under these conditions, traces of the desired insulin product were observed. When performing the reaction at elevated temperature, the insulin product was then obtained in 33% yield. 
We then submitted the allylic acetate under the same reaction conditions and the insulin product was obtained in a comparable yield of 31%. From these studies, the allylic alcohol was selected as the allylic alkylation substrate best suited for our strategy due to its delivery of the insulin in the highest yield and its preparation of single high yielding reaction. Upon performing the reaction on a larger scale, the insulin product was obtained in a preparatively useful yield of 67%. We then attempted to render the allylic substitution reaction an anti-selective. From screening of chiral ligands, the trostac nap 4 and phenol ligands were found to afford the insulin product in comparable enantimeric ratios. Since the insulin product was obtained in a high yield with the DAC phenol ligand, this ligand was therefore taken forward in the optimization studies in which variation of the other reaction parameters was investigated. It was found that by increasing the steric bulk of the boron additive, from triethylborane to 9-BBN octal resulted in an increase in anti-selectivity but a reduced yield, whereas lowering the temperature from 50 degrees to room temperature was found to increase both the anti-selectivity and the yield. Variation of other reaction parameters, such as further cooling and other reagent ratios, does not lead to an increase in the yield nor in the anti-selectivity. With the optimised conditions, we also applied the anden phenol trose ligand, which was reported to give the highest enantiosal activities in a related system reported by Trost and co-workers. However, this was not shown to be the case of our system. Finally, the optimised conditions were shown to be scalable, with the insulin product obtained in a reasonable yield of 42%, and with an antimeric ratio of 91 to 9. Crucially, all reactions proceeded with excellent chemo and regioselectivity. Notably, initial optimization of the enantioselective allylic substitution reaction was performed with the SS configured trose ligands. However, to synthesize the natural product, we switched to the RR configured ligands based on extrapolation of the stereochemical results from the related system of trose and co workers. With the key allylic substitution reaction successfully performed, we turned our attention to the next steps in synthesis. Under basic conditions, the inzilinine was cyclized in a manic reaction to afford the cis-fused tricycle as a single diastereomer. Upon construction of the C-ring, a 4 3 0 fuse system was formed, for which cis stereochemistry is more stable. We were interested to see if the allylic substitution and manic reactions could be performed as a one-part procedure, in which the base would be added after observed formation of the inzilin aluminium ion. This was shown to be successful when performing the allylic substitution reaction both non stereoselectively and enantioselectively, albeit with diminished yield compared to when these reactions were performed over two separate steps. With the exo-eno in hand, we then proceeded to the double bond migration. The exo to end a double bond migration presented a significant challenge, not only due to the lack of literature precedence for such a system, but also due to the lack of a strong thermodynamic driving force. As although stabilisation should be obtained upon going from an exocyclic to an endocyclic enone, the migration would occur between two trisubstituted systems. Therefore, multiple strategies were investigated, selected examples of which are discussed in the supporting information of the publication. It was eventually found that a protection of the insulin nitrogen atom, followed by a 1,4 hydrosylation of the exoenone, afforded the thermodynamic silo in ether in 81% over two steps. Notably, this approach utilised the double bonds in the exoenone for regioselective formation of the desired silo ether. An oxidation was then proposed before the endoenone. For this, a Saguza Ito reaction was initially envisaged. Despite the silo ether being submitted to various Saguza Ito protocols, the endoenone was not obtained. We were then drawn to an IBX mediated oxidation reported by Nicolau and co workers in which silo enoethers were converted to their corresponding enones. After some optimization, the desired NBOC endoenone was obtained in a reasonable yield of 41%, together with the regioisomeric NBOC exoenone in a yield of 17%, which could then be resubmitted to the 1,4 hydrosylation reaction. With the desired endoenone in hand, we turned our efforts to the construction of the DNE rings. ND protection and concomitant azomycal addition proceed in the presence of trifluoroacetic acid, furnishing the tetracyclic product as a single diastereomer. 
Upon construction of the D-ring, a 430 fuse system was again formed, thus rationalising the observed cis stereochemistry. The final E-ring was established by means of an intramolecular enolate alkylation using potassium terbutoxide. Again, full stereo control of the newly formed quaternary carbon stereo centre was achieved, with the pentacycle delivered as a single diastereomer, and thus the construction of the pentacyclic framework was complete. The diastereo selectivity for the cis fused piperidine E ring was rationalised by the absence of destabilising sympentane interactions in the cis fused isomer. These destabilising interactions are expected to be present in the transfused isomer between the hydrogen atoms highlighted in yellow. We were, however, intrigued to see if the Dean E ring closures could be performed as a one part procedure. This was realised by performing the ND protection under Lewis acidic conditions, followed by a solvent exchange and the addition of the base for the enolate alkylation. Pleasingly, the pentacycle was obtained in a yield of 71% in this one part procedure, which was higher than the yield of 56% over two steps when the ring closures were performed separately. Notably, the pentacycle was again obtained as a single diastereomer. A final wolf kishner reduction then yielded a speed of spermidine. Interestingly, upon measurement of the optical rotation, it was determined that we had obtained the unnatural enantiomer of speed of spermidine. Therefore, for the allylic substitution reaction, it was not possible to extrapolate the stereochemical results from the related system of trosin co-workers to our system. So to conclude, from our investigation into the allylic substitution reaction, we've uncovered a new class of allylic alkylation substrates for use with free substituted indole derivatives, namely the Marita Bader's Hillman adducts and derivatives thereof. Thus, this work expands the scope of this methodology. The allylic substitution reaction was developed with high enantioselectivity and acted as a stereo-defining step in our synthetic route. The remaining stereo centers were then installed with full diastereoselectivity under substrate control. This culminated in the shortest anti-selective synthesis of a speed of spermidine reported to date, in seven linear steps from commercially available starting materials. Furthermore, this work represents the first application of a palladium catalase allylic substitution reaction with a free substitute indole derivative in the synthesis of a speed of spermidine and more broadly of a speed of sperm alkaloids. And with that, I would like to thank Professor Christian Stark for the opportunity to work on this project and in his research group, and my colleagues at the University of Hamburg for their support and advice throughout, and the University of Hamburg for funding. I would also like to thank you all watching for your time and attention. Thank you again, Matthew, for the invitation to present this work here, and to the entire Synthesis Workshop team for making this platform possible. A big thank you to Chalda for that wonderful and insightful talk. We really appreciate her time and the exciting research she shared with us today. If you enjoyed this session, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and follow us to stay updated on more cutting edge research and inspiring discussions. Thanks for joining us and we will see you in the next episode of the Synthesis Workshop.